In this brief note, we're going to consider our derivation for uh, the LDA solution, which we didn't have time to do in class. So remember that what we, uh, what we want to do now is find a low dimensional uh, projection when we also have labels. So LDA is about finding a low dimensional representation using labels. I won't go through all the details because we did them in class, but the motivating example looked something like this. This is pretty similar to the picture we had in class. We have a bunch of points labeled, let's say red or plus, and a bunch of points labeled blue or minus. And the observation is the following. We have the tension between this direction, which maximizes, if we project onto this direction, this maximizes the distance between the center of mass. But if we project onto this direction, it squishes each individual class the most. So it minimizes the spread within each class, which is which is what we want to do because we want to only keep information, we want to project away, in other words, from dimensions where there's a lot of spread within the class. What we'd like to do is find directions that maximizes the spread between, uh, between the classes. So what we found, uh, what we derived in class, we, um, we derived the Fisher criterion, which is the following. So we let S B be the matrix mu plus minus mu minus mu plus minus mu minus transpose where this is the vector this is the geometric mean of uh, let's say label plus and this is the mean of label minus so remember that these are vectors so mu plus and mu minus are in Rn, they're n-dimensional vectors, which means that Sb is an n by n matrix. Then we also defined the matrix that corresponds to the within class variance. And this was just the sum of the covariances. So this was uh, the sum over all points labeled plus xi, xi transpose, plus, whoops, I have to subtract off the means. So let's make sure we do this right. Minus mu plus times xi minus mu plus transpose. So this is the covariance matrix of the points labeled plus, and I'm going to add to that the covariance matrix of the points labeled minus. xj minus mu minus, xj minus mu minus transpose. So SW captures the within class variance. And Fisher's criterion is, we denoted this in class by j of v, so let's continue with that notation here. It's equal to v transpose SBV divided by V transpose SWV. And so the goal of LDA is to find the direction that makes this as big as possible. So we want to find the direction. And when I say direction, it means that I want a normalized vector. I want to maximize J of V. In other words, 
my LDA direction is equal to the arg max. In other words, what maximizes, what solves the problem V transpose SB V divided by V transpose SWV. And I'm going to ask for this to be normalized because I just want the direction. So again, notice what's happening here. In the numerator, I have V transpose SBV. This is telling me that I want a direction V that keeps the centers of mass as far away as possible. In the denominator, I have V transpose SWV. Now, in order to make the ratio big, I want to make the numerator big, which means I want to keep the centers of mass as far away from, as possible from each other. And, or, uh, and, and also, I want to make the denominator small. Making the denominator small means finding directions that make the within class variance small. So how are we going to solve this uh, problem? Well, first, let's note uh, the following observation. So if you look at this uh, objective, it's scale invariant. In other words, any vector v and any scaling of v, so lambda is any scalar, lambda times v, have the same value. So we're going to take advantage of that to simplify this problem a little bit. So with a little bit of thought, you can see that um, if I solve the intermediate problem v hat, which is the argmax of v transpose s b v subject to v transpose s w v equals 1, that then the normalized version of this is actually a solution to, my, to, to, my, to the problem that I care about. In other words, VLDA is equal to V hat divided by its own norm. Okay, so that means that it's actually good enough for us to solve this uh, V hat problem. So that's a little bit simpler than what we had before. We got rid of that fraction. Let's keep going and see, how, um, see what we can do. So let's look at uh, this constraint. V transpose SWV equals 1. And let's note that if instead uh, we had something similar but a little, bit, a little bit different, if instead of the matrix SW we had the identity matrix, then actually we'd be in business. So if instead we had V transpose times the identity times V equals 1, this is exactly the same as V transpose V equals 1, which is exactly the same as just asking for the norm to equal 1. Note that it doesn't, what's actually this is equivalent to is the square equaling 1, but I can just take the square root. Then this is just the familiar PCA problem. So we would have our PCA problem, which is to maximize V transpose S B V subject to oops, the norm of v equaling 1, this is just PCA. And we went through a lengthy derivation in class where we saw that the solution to this problem is just that v is equal to the largest eigenvector. In other words, the eigenvector corresponding to the largest eigenvalue of Sb. This is particularly easy in this problem because SB only has one single eigenvector that corresponds to a non-zero eigenvalue. SB is what's called a rank one matrix. It's just mu plus minus mu minus times mu plus minus mu minus transpose. And so the only non-zero eigenvalue is, let's see, um, let me put it differently. The only non-zero eigenvalue corresponds to the eigenvector mu plus minus 
mu minus. And let's see what that is. Well, SB times the vector mu plus minus mu minus equals, writing it out, mu plus minus mu minus mu plus minus mu minus transpose times mu plus minus mu minus. This is equal to mu plus minus mu minus times mu plus minus mu minus squared. Or writing it in a different way, this is lambda times my original vector, mu plus minus mu minus, where lambda is equal to the norm squared of mu plus minus mu minus. So we've shown what, uh, what the solution would be. And so this means that v would equal, in this case, mu plus minus mu minus that vector, but normalized, because all eigenvectors are, uh, by convention, normalized. Okay, so where, uh, where are we here? Let me scroll up again to, uh, to show you our, our logic so far. So scrolling up a little bit. We've said that because of scale invariance, I need to solve this problem. And if instead of the matrix SW, I had the identity, well then it's the PCA problem and we'd know how to solve it. So this idea from here is simple. Let's just make it the identity by doing an appropriate change of variables. So I'm gonna copy this again so we can, we can see it where I have a little more space, um, a little more space to write. So again, our problem is maximize V transpose, let me clean that up, V transpose SB V subject to V transpose SW V equals one. So we're gonna do a change of variables. Now, to see what that change of variables is, first note that um, we expect that SW is invertible. So SW is the sum of two covariance matrices. It's the sum of the covariance matrix for all the plus labels, all the points labeled plus, and the, and the covariance matrix of all the points labeled minus. And as long as those points aren't already lying in a lower dimensional space, SW will be invertible. So SW is symmetric, like all covariance matrices. This is just the sum of two covariance matrices. The sum of two symmetric matrices is again symmetric. So this means in particular that its eigenvalues are real and its eigenvectors are orthonormal. We also know, as we've, we showed in class, that it's what's called semi-definite. This means that its eigenvalues are greater than or equal to zero, and it's invertible by the above argument, namely that argument being that a covariance matrix is always invertible unless the points already lie on a lower dimensional subspace. So that means that, in fact, lambda i is strictly greater than zero. So now let's use something, our main hammer that we've used again and again and again when talking about symmetric matrices, the eigenvalue decomposition. The eigenvalue decomposition tells us that SW can be written as the sum of its eigenvalues times Let's see, shall I use V again? I guess I guess I will, but I don't want you to confuse this with the V. That's the uh, what I'm trying to optimize over. VI, VI transpose, where the lambda I's are the eigenvalues, and the VI's are the eigenvectors, and remember that they are orthonormal. So VI has norm one, and VI is perpendicular to Vj um, for every i different from j. Great. So this tells us, first of all, what the change of variables should be and how we should accomplish it. So let's we're going to do the following change of variables. Z 
is going to equal the square root of SW times V, which is the same as writing that V is equal to the inverse square root of W times Z. Now, how this eigenvalue decomposition helps us is it guarantees us that this matrix square root and its inverse both exist. So please check for yourselves that SW to the 1 half is equal to the sum of the square root of each lambda i. And note that we need lambda i to be non-negative in order for this to make sense times vi, vi transpose. What do I mean by check? I mean actually multiply sw to the one half by itself and check that you get sw. And then also check that sw to the minus one half is equal to the sum of lambda i to the minus one half times vi, vi transpose. In order to write this, I need the lambda i to be strictly positive because I'm, I'm looking at the uh, one over that, at the reciprocal. Again, what I mean by check is check that SW to the 1 half and SW to the minus 1 half are actually inverses. Multiply them by each other and make sure that you're getting the identity. Okay, now let's write this problem. Let's write this problem here with the change of variables. So what happens to, uh, let me call this star. So uh, maybe it's best if I just copy it, copy it again. So let me, let me do that with this change of variables, I'll leave that at top. So again, star is equal to the problem, maximize V transpose SBV, subject to V transpose SWV. Now let's plug in for what V is. V is equal to SW to the minus one half Z. So this tells me that this is equal to max Z transpose SW to the minus one half times SB times V again, which is SW to the minus one half times Z. Subject to V transpose, which is Z transpose SW to the minus one half times Uh, times SW times V, which again is SW to the minus one half times Z, which is exactly equivalent to what we wanted. Maximize Z transpose SW to the minus one half SB SW to the minus one half Z subject to z equals 1. So as we said before, as we wanted, this is, we've transformed this into the PCA problem, and we know what the solution is in the z space. So the solution z, I'll put, I'll call this z hat, is the largest eigenvalue, uh, eigenvector. When I say largest eigenvector, of course, I mean, again, as always, the eigenvector corresponding to the largest eigenvalue. It's the largest eigenvalue of this matrix, SW to the minus one half, SB, SW to the minus one half. So what is this again? What is this matrix? This is just um, SW to the minus one half, SB, SW to the minus one half, is SW to the minus one half times mu plus minus mu minus times SW to the minus one half times mu plus minus mu minus transpose. Okay, so check that to make sure that this is a, that you, that you agree with this. And therefore we know that Z hat is equal to SW to the minus one half mu plus minus mu minus normalized. Okay, we're getting there. This is z hat. Let's get what v is. So 
Let me scroll up for a second and show you what V is as a function of Z. V is equal to SW to the minus one half times Z. So writing that, V is equal to SW to the minus one half times Z. So it equals SW inverse times mu plus minus mu minus, right? which means that we've solved for V. So this is, so let's go, uh, so, so this, is, this is our solution, right? So this, well, this is our intermediate solution. So let me write that out. So V is equal to SW inverse divided by mu plus minus mu minus. And let me normalize that. SW inverse over mu plus minus mu minus. This is in fact our solution to LDA. So this is normalized now. And therefore solves our original LDA problem that we had up top. Let me write it again. Um, so V LDA is my V from above. I guess I'm just copying at this point. This is SW inverse mu plus minus mu minus divided by SW inverse mu plus minus mu minus, just the norm of this. So this is a normalized vector. So this solves the problem of maximizing V transpose SBV divided by V transpose SWV subject to V equals one. What are the key properties this, that we used? We used one, the fact that SB is rank one and has only one eigenvector corresponding to a non-zero eigenvalue. We use the fact that SW is invertible and because it's symmetric and positive semi-definite, it has a square root and also a reciprocal square root. So these are the main ideas. And of course, we used our solution to PCA. So these three are kind of our main ingredients in obtaining the solution. I hope this makes sense, and I encourage you to look through um, the details and things that I ask you to check